This is Captain Adam from Real to Real Outdoors. Thanks for tuning in to today's episode of the Captain's Roundtable. Before we get started, we got to thank our great sponsors, Captain Chuck's 2, Ludington Beverage, and Bush Light. So let's meet the captains and get to the topic. Kevin Pomorski, I'm a captain of Feed and Time Charters out of Ludington. I'm Dennis Pumondin, uh, captain of Clocked Out Charters of Ludington. And I'm Alex Bialik of Fireplug Charters, uh, just a little bit farther north in Manistee. All right, today's episode, uh, we're going to talk about running offshore. Um, I'm going to set up a scenario for these guys, and, and then we're going to get their best bait. So get your, get your tablet out and start taking notes on this thing. Uh, all right, so here's the, here's the scenario. You're running offshore to a defined break. So you have cold water on the surface. You probably have a line that you can see in the water. Um, what are four baits that you are going to put in the water, and where are they going to be? Wow. Um, for sure, uh, the double orange crush right up top, the highest, my highest rod will have a double orange crush, whether it's an SS, whether it's a stinger. I, I don't know that the, the manufacturer matters, but that color pattern catches fish. Always, always has. Um, mixed veggie, that's another hot one that I would always run out there. Um, I would probably put that on a little bit deeper rod. I wouldn't run it on, on the surface. Um, my third one, this is probably a guarantee, is a yak fireball. A what? He took it. <laughs> I did. I said it out loud. Yuck fireball on a high diver. That's where I'd put it. <laughs> high slide diver. Hold on. Let me, well, let, let me just interject here real quick. One time I, I was fishing a tournament with Dennis. The only time I was fishing a tournament with Dennis. And Dennis was, I think, holding the rod. And he goes, I think I got one. <laughs> We're fishing the pier heads with like 45 minutes to go. And yeah, he caught. It's like seventy-five degrees. It's beautiful like a ten day. Pound steelhead. Ten pound steelhead at the pier heads. We needed it. <laughs> yeah, on a. Yeah, I go. What is that? He goes, In the big. Oh, that's a. It's a clean. It's a clean bird. You know, with a with a yuck fireball. <laughs> that's what we do? You gotta be kidding me. <laughs> All right, go ahead. I knew you were gonna say okay. that. So the the yuck fireball on a high diver is probably one of my definitely go to baits. Um, my fourth one, I got to think about this one. Um, if I was to run my fourth bait, um, boy, I, I uh, recently, the last couple of years, the orange slice, mm -hmm. um, I mean, I, I can't take credit for it. My, my son, he runs the daylights out of it, and um, he catches fish. That's a... Uh, moonshine. It is, yeah, the moonshine. The half small, series. Yeah, yeah, the half series, right? Um, that's it, a great, it's a great spoon. I mean, there's so many, there's so many good cold water, shallow water, or shallow spoons that I run. It's hard to narrow down four, but that 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 would be my fourth. I'd agree with definitely the fireball. <laughs> 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 I would throw it on a high, a high diver. Um, Slide diver. Um, I would probably a Magic Man SS. Yeah, that's a good Dreamweaver one. Magic Man SS. That's that's usually a pretty good one on a clean board, one color, something like that. Um, a double orange laser. I mean, double orange crush is great too. Goldilocks double yeah. orange crush, but uh, <clears throat> the double orange laser. Um, that's a that's a pretty good spoon, um, and for fourth, uh, I don't think I want to go last. I mean, but, all, I mean be, you're the host. I mean, we're you're definitely going last at this point. Like, yeah, right, <laughs> thirteen through sixteen is going to be difficult because <laughs> most of my baits are taken. Right. All right, fourth um, one. Fourth one. Probably a Riverside. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Yeah. That's a good one. I'd run the Riverside. I like the Yak Reverse Riverside. Yeah. Which is painted the other way. Oh. That's, that's a good one. 
You know, I'm trying to think of. A, I'm kind of All right, well, right well, well, we're just gonna skip you because you <laughs> yeah. drink some bush, drink some bush light, and <laughs> we'll come back to you in a minute. That'll make you money. Alex, what what do you what do you got? Um, Manistee's got to be different than Lington. Again, as I, for what I can speak out of Manistee, we're chasing some kind of slick or some kind of line out there more than just your temp, um, especially if that slick sets up. But I'm going to go um, on my two deepest boards. I'm going to run all four boards. Two deep boards are going to be a blue-green dolphin and a caramel dolphin. And then I'm going to go wrecking ball, um, super slim. And then... Top one on like a one color, two color. I'm gonna run a red and black thin fin. Oh yeah, that's a good yeah. one. Just because it may have Steve for whatever reason, there's some juvenile coho hanging around. And, I yeah. think Doug that fishes with with us in the tournaments, he should just live in Manistee because right. pretty much just <laughs> he wants to run gave his program right <laughs> yep, there. Exactly. Man, you know we're north of the point. We ought to have a caramel dolphin. In. <laughs> right. It's like okay, Doug. <laughs> yeah. You know, and just and, kidding, Doug. We love you. <laughs> you know, mixed veggie. It just, it's just it's out there too. But yeah, for whatever reason, my go to running any kind of line out there is going to be caramel dolphin. To be honest. So I'm I'm so happy that you guys have put me in this uh, position of <laughs> finding literally 13 through 16 out there. But I think that I have a couple, and they may be a little bit off um, from from what most people do. But uh, I like tangerine. That's a good one. Uh, it's, it's a stinger. It's always in there. Uh, a lot of times I'll have that on, on a high, high bird. Um, yep. Probably going to have a doorbell orange crush on my highest, highest bird, but... Um, right in there, like a two color or something like that. I'm going to have that on there. Um, another one is a newer one. That's also a stinger. Um, and I'm, I don't fish a ton of stingers. So this, this is kind of a stretch, but, uh, that inmate spoon. And I like to run that inmate spoon in gold. I like to, when I go out there to run, you know, I might have four or five silverback spoons in there, but I'm going to have some gold spoons in there too. And even if the, the, you know, it's not overcast or the conditions, I always want to have a couple. So I kind of like have that selection out there. Um, another thing that I would run, I don't even know if I want to admit it, but um, a Pro King Halloween on a, on a slide diver. I don't know what that is. It's, it's, it's kind of ugly. It's ugly. <laughs> it's kind of ugly. Um, Let me guess. Black and yellow. Black and orange. Black and orange. orange. Yep. And then Oriole. it has prism tape on the back side of it. Mm -hmm. um, on a slide diver, that's pretty common for me to put out. Um, boy, another one. Uh, oh, Bumblebee. Bumblebee is Bumblebee is a good slide it, diver bait too. I like it on a free slider more than anything. Yeah, yeah free slide. Yeah. Yep. It, it's not as good as it used to be, but it's still good. Yeah. I I, I think anyway. I, mean, I agree. I think well, conditions kind of have to be right yeah. for it. Oh, yeah. song What's stuff that? Like that? Richard, he runs that like raspberry black. Raspberry. raspberry. No, it's like black raspberry. It's a Dreamweaver spoon or an old NK or something. Probably black and raspberry, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And he'll... He, he, kind of like a... With the wart frog pattern mm -hmm. or whatever, but yeah. black and raspberry. Wart frog too, you know. I mean, that's yeah, a good, well, that's, that's a good spoon. That's really good. For that's steel. a good spoon. People <laughs> people don't run that spoon enough, mm -hmm. yeah. especially like on your you know not super deep coppers, but your you know your two fifties or three hundreds out there. You're gonna have rogue salmon swimming around. Yep. Um, I like that. I still like to run a paddle, I like, and I like yep. to run a paddle down deep, and yep. we do. You know, we do really well out there on deep, and, um, you know, we'll be out there fishing, marking fish, you know, 200, 250 feet down, and we'll run something down there I would I, and, and catch those fish, and a mm -hmm. lot of times they're kings. I would say uh, if, it's, if it's overcast, kind of rough, you know, and you take a little silver horde plug those, those oh, yeah. small ones and you throw Remember, that on a, like a full core or a half core out there out deep you'll you'll get a lot of steel a nice steel on it yeah but it, it, you, you're not going to get them if it's calm and sunny and no and that's when i run that thin fin it's it's a little rough a little yeah. choppy yeah um but back to when you were talking about magic man you know that's like <laughs> this topic can go on forever to be yeah. honest but yeah, back no. and forth you know good. magic man but then uh natural born killer too mbk yeah. Oh, yeah. like oh, yeah. that Again, on a yep. on a slide diver for me is kind of lights out. A little bit deeper. Yeah. Yep. Uh, SOG. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. you well, can't. How can you forget that? <laughs> yeah. You look at it yeah. four. I mean, that's that's. Well, I thought sixteen would cover it, but really, like I th I'm pretty sure we could keep going. Oh yeah, oh. easy. How about yellow tails? Yeah. yeah. But, you know, you run, you really run out of rods when you're out there going. What else is there to put? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have a lot of and, room normally. Yeah. And being the time of year, we're we're all kind of in like ice fishing mode and <laughs> just got yeah. out of deer hunting. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean. Salmon fishing's back here right now, yeah. so it takes us a little bit longer to click into back into what we're. It's hard to think about. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so you know, I think the, I think when you're out there, you know, you can only put so much up in that top 10, 15 feet. Yep. Yeah, I, I'm not afraid to run a full core. I'm not afraid to run a three hundred copper. I'm not afraid to run a meat rig out there. No, and you'll catch it. you'll catch steelhead. You'll hit a steelhead on on your double orange crush on a one collar and then 30 seconds later hit 190 down on a meat rig yeah you know i mean it doesn't yeah or just a like, lot of run things. like a blue bubble something like that on a on a wire diver yep. still yeah just getting absolutely. them down away from everything else yeah fly or a meat rig yep too on that um so you know i i think don't put all your eggs in one basket when you're out there because those fish really can be just about anywhere on the water column and then and then w what about like what's your approach so let's just say we're you know you're you're trolling west and you're you come across a line that's running uh north south like what's your what's your approach are you going to troll through the line and keep going or are you going to work that line like what what's your uh what's your kind of go to on that uh, i'll start uh depending again on wind more than anything um i'll make a couple crosses through it but if i can Again, I'm watching my center rigger, and if it's not straight, I'm yeah. typically not catching fish unless unless it's a turn. So I'm gonna try to just have match the best current and best speed for whatever I'm running. If it's spoons, plugs, or paddles. Yeah, and I think speed's a big thing out there. Yeah, uh, you know, everybody's used to that. Well, most people, I guess, low twos, mid twos um, for salmon. You know, give or take. I mean, it could be higher, could be slower, depending on time of year or whatever. Um, but it seems like when you run out deep, at least for me, I always kick it up. You know, you're you're three, 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 one, Even. two, eight. You're trying to cover more water yeah. too. Find active yeah. fish, not just yeah. stagnant fish. And I, you know, I've been out there and been well over three catching oh, lake yeah. trout. I, I, oh yeah, I, you know, it doesn't I caught matter. A, I caught a brown at five miles an hour on accident. We were trying to get back to the pier heads for the night, but <laughs> <laughs> and I tell you what, a two pound brown at five miles an hour That's a good rips fight. drag like a thirty pound can. So maybe maybe what we should do is, is go we walleye. Did not catch that. Go walleye trolling at like five six miles an hour. <laughs> See how that works out for us. It, yeah, it hit. We might jumped, be we might be on this up then. <laughs> um. Yeah, so I mean, I think that's a that's a good, you know, I I'm what I, I usually there's a cold side and a warm side, and yeah. I think that you'll usually find different fish on different sides. Um, normally, it's you know steelhead on the cold side and and um, kings or you know juvenile fish uh, kings or cohos or something on the warmer side, but it's not always true. No, but I like to zigzag those lines you know i like to work it from different angles the current is a consideration and your your troll probably is going to look better on one side than the other um if you turn around it could be the opposite side but um i don't like to venture too far from a line if i'm working a line i'm working a line right. lines hold fish well you know in manistee your point is so far out you know our 33 line is another 12 mi 10 miles 11 miles from our port so when you're out there you're really committing yourself to either that's there or it's not and yeah so you better work it and work it fast otherwise your bite's gonna be done inside by the time you get back yeah and i think if i'm working a line um you know like work a line that's running north and south and i'm working north and south on it i'm not really it, it takes quite a few bites to get me to turn around. Yeah, um, I'm. I'm just covering that water and trying to find little pockets of fish. Um, I I just think if you turn around, one, it's hard to get them to go both directions, and two, if you turn around, are they still there? You know, where'd they go? Yeah, you just don't know. I'm in the minority of this line debacle. Um, generally, if you run, if I run across the line, I'm already on a troll that I like. 
And if I go across the line and sure, if I hit four or five fish, guess what? You know, yeah. I'm I'm going back to that line and I'm gonna work and just do the zigzag. If but if I go across that two degree break, I don't hit a fish, I I keep going. If I'm offshore, mm-hmm. I mean yeah. I am not gonna spin around. I cause can, you wanna know why I don't? Because I've done it a hundred <laughs> times and never caught a fish. <laughs> So no, I, I, I am probably in the, in the minority of this whole, you know, you come to a line, do you work it? You know, sure. I'll, if I, if I hit some fish on it, I'll work it. If I don't, I'm going. Yeah. I just keep going, keep going, and keep going. I don't think that like, we don't get the, the lines like Manistee does. No, they don't set up the same way. We don't get them like we used to. And we don't get them like we used to. I mean, like the 10 degree, yeah, 10 degree break. Well, with all the the scum and sticks and debris, you don't, we don't, we just don't get them anymore. Yeah. You know what? And, uh, and we're at fault too, especially for weekend warrior stuff like that, um, which we're still trying to appeal to here. It's, you're going to follow something like that, watching coast watch, and you're going to run out there, and more times than not, it's not going to be there. there anymore. Yeah. And you just yeah. wasted your morning bite running out there to run yeah. back in. So, I mean, really stay up to date on that as you're getting to the launch, as you're waiting to launch your boat, stuff like that on your way out. Yeah, it for me to go, I, I kind of have this theory that I don't care if I'm the first guy. I don't care if I'm the guy that found it because nine out of ten times you're the guy that struck out, yeah. mm-hmm. you know. Um, I want something that I'm very confident and consistent with. Um, I don't mind being there day two, you know. Well, for us, we're not. We don't leave fish to find fish, right? Yeah. And you know, you, you've got to be not catching fish to go out there. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> like I have to struggle going five miles out to go another five miles right. out. Right. I mean, if, if you're catching fish in, in close, it doesn't matter what you hear is happening outside because you're not going there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but like t- you know, in tournament fishing is a little bit different because you do have to different species. a lot of the t- yeah. tournaments you got to catch different species, and um, you know it's nothing for us to pick up and run twenty five miles to kind of try and catch two fish. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the same point, a lot of times you can run twenty five miles and not catch a fish, yeah. or you know, and then run another five and not and set back yeah. up. And I mean, it's it's tournament it's fishing. Up. You could be chasing one bite the rest well, of the day. Look at Manistee yeah. Tournament last year. Yeah. You know, first day we went out there, everybody that ran out there, 25 miles from where we were fishing, not from shore. Yeah. And everybody that went out there the first day got them. I mean, everybody got steelhead. They got lake trout, kings. I mean, there was just a mixture. It was happening. There is a ton of fish yeah. out there. The next day, everybody ran out there, and most didn't get them. I, I, I mean, there was a... A short couple. period of time, yeah. yeah, they bit, but if you weren't there, it yeah. didn't matter. It didn't matter, and that's another good discussion about, especially if you're breaking down water to fish tournaments, is that you know, like he just said, if you if you're not there when they're biting, because yeah. those fish are finicky out there. I mean, they'll bite in a window. Um, you know, trout can be the same way. Salmon are that way. I mean, obviously in the morning they bite, and then usually you have a late late morning bite, but. Um, you know, it's no different out there. It's not a guaranteed thing. And it's a, that's a big commitment. Right. That's, yeah. a, that's even worse than setting up in 60 foot. Yeah. Well, you know, just to come back to the topic, we we're talking about going, I believe we ran down to the tens that, that second day where everybody yeah. hit them. We ran down there and nothing's there. Okay. Well, you think those ones are shut off? Now go out to water where they're going to be offshore up in the top 40 foot of the water column. Well, that water just is even clearer. Than what we just had inside. Yeah. Well, and it, it was completely different too. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was it was warmer. It was there was there was scum. There was scum definitely. Uh, a lot of algae and stuff on top. But well, we we hit three fish out there, and you guys pulled up right after we hit our third fish, and we never had another bite. And I think out of what ten boats that were there out was there, one there bite. was one bite. Mm-hmm. One bite that I know of. Yeah, you know, after the after that our last bite, there was one more bite, and that was a boat right ahead of us. Yeah, yeah. but so, the first day, oh yeah, hundred percent different. We we sat down the first day, and I, literally we got our rods in. Three minutes later, we pulled our rods and, and ran back. And mind you, <laughs> we ran fifty two miles <laughs> to fish for th- really like yeah. three three minutes. Yeah, four minutes. it was crazy. Yeah. But and mind you. 
from day one to day two, there wasn't much wind. It's no, not like there wasn't the wind a lot cranked uh-huh. out of one direction or the other uh-huh. or or anything like that. So yeah. we're kind of going on a off tangent here. <laughs> but yeah. I think we're gonna just finish up our bush lights here and I, I hope you enjoyed. I hope we gave you a little bit of insight as to uh you know what to do when you do run out there um just if you enjoy this uh subscribe follow us push that like button tell your friends if you didn't like it don't tell anybody that's fine (laughs) right right? (laughs) all right until next time enjoy cheers